In South Dakota, we are 50% of the state population. And although we are just a little blip in, you know, the existence of what shapes on state right now legislatively, we are the most affected by legislation changes, by laws that already exist. So um, one really big emphasis that I want you guys to know about us is that we have a lot of things going on in South Dakota that are worth the attention and the energy that we're putting in to, 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 the, to the downfall of one person in our nation. Our folks in Rapid City right now are more likely to be killed by the police than not. Same thing goes for Sioux Falls, where I live. We've had um, two Lakota youth that were attacked by police. One of them, unfortunately, um, was killed, and the other is in the justice system now dealing with all of the things that come along with us being targeted of our own homelands. We are continuously losing our children to the state system. We have um, now a governor who is offering $25 million bonus when you adopt the child with your fostering. Fuck. We have people who are still trying to mine uranium out of our sacred Black Hills. You know, there's just so many different aspects to our struggle that deserve the attention and the outpouring of support. And we want to make sure that, you know, people are aware that we are real people and this, this affects us. So moving forward, you know, I am hope people are able to see us on this thing, Vince, because this is a, this is a huge collective experience that we're going to be going through together. You know, we, we can't afford people to have a distrust of our ceremonies and of our medicine people. And to be honest, I have to really do not to get emotional over it because that's where my heart sank. I read, a, I read online that, you know, someone said you can't trust your medicine people and your medicine women and your your ceremonies that you want. Well, how do we instill our identity in our own community? How do we, how do we keep down by our own lands when there's a constant erasure or, or even lateral oppression? A lateral assimilation is really what this is because they're, they're hoping that this is the only way. This is Bible. This is everything that one person says is not, does not represent our people and it does, definitely does not represent our Ceremonies on moving forward, I think we're really hoping that by showing face and showing visibility and creating a space along with the Las Vegas Indian Center and all of these orgs um, involved today, give us a sense of community that a lot of people are searching for. Um, I myself am from the reservation. I'm born and raised, um, I grew up going to Minneapolis on a regular basis, and now I'm living within the Sioux Falls com um, community. But, you know, I kn I would, I would never know what it's like to not have someone to call or someone to reach out to, to just feel supported. And that really becomes the identifier for predators in our community. They count on you not having accountability to people. They're counting on not having someone to give a contrast to the messaging that they have. Well, that's part of who we are as a human. As a Lakota person, I was taught what makes us human is our free will. We make that decision to do the right thing. We make the decision to do harm upon others. And that shouldn't be the representation of all of us as a whole, because there's so many more people of us who have power in our prayers we have faith in our people. And when we come together like this, it's not just one person who has that power. It's the connectivity of those prayers and intention. So again, I just want to thank you, Redis, for coming here and being here with us. And, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can help you guys in any way that we can. <laughs>